a humongous, disappointing ending for a film. Spoilers, okay? This will contain spoilers. Just when you think they, the heroes win, the bad guys strike back, and the good guys defeat it. I thought I would learn after watching Infinity War, you know? Well, I guess after the triumphant end for Endgame and many others, I forgot that there are movies where the bad guy wins. So, what's the movie I'm talking about? Well, as you can see from the title, it is A Most Wanted Man, Philip Seymour Hoffman's last movie. <sighs> He's the reason I watched it, okay? Philip Seymour Hoffman, there's no question about it, he was one of the best actors of his generation. He could transform into anything. He could play good guy, he could play bad guy. You either like him or you hate him. Actually, Philip Seymour Hoffman, he had a magic touch where every character he played, you like him, regardless of how good they are or how awful they are. Think of, if you want to see an example, watch him in Mission Impossible 3, where he plays a very awful bad guy. Yet, I still liked him because he's played by Philip Seymour Hoffman. There you go. A lot of actors have a magic touch where they just play an awful character or a good character, and regardless of who they play, you just instantly like him in an instant like that. It's just that simple. Examples, of course, would be Jeffrey Dean Morgan in The Walking Dead, and J.K. Simmons in the Spider-Man films and Whiplash. Now, A Most Wanted Man, what is the story about? Well, it's about a, it's a spy thriller. Think of it as a neo-noir film or a, a throwback to the mid-40s, early 50s noir era. That's right. So, it's about a German spy. That's this guy. That's who Philip Seymour Hoffman plays, a German spy, as he tries to, ta as he tries to rescue a man who illegally immigrated into Germany. And this man who illegally immigrated into Germany is a political refugee. And the rest of the film is him doing everything in his power to make sure his family is safe. And then of course there's a couple of nuts, nutheads in the in the film that do everything they can to arrest him because the the immigrant is accused of terrorism. That's the thing about men who are men and women who are Muslims. A lot of people since September 11th happened. A lot of Muslims that I see are being teased, ridiculed, or accused of being terrorists. And of course we all know that's a stereotype and not all stereotypes are true. There's a good guy and a bad guy in everything. That's what this movie shows us. Of course, it has an all-star cast. <laughs> Willem Dafoe, Rachel McAdams, great cast. I'm not sure about their accents, though. I know Philip Seymour Hoffman was an extremely versatile actor. I know he was willing to change his voice as well as putting on an accent in some of his films. I actually don't know how convincing Rachel McAdams' accent is, including Philip Seymour Hoffman's accent. I don't know if it's good enough. I haven't been to Germany long enough to, to understand it. So, if you are in the mood for neo-noir films or a throwback to 1940s, 1950s noir films, this one's for you. I mean it. It is a bit of a suspense build. You're going to be like, oh. you're going to be sitting in your chair kind of kneeling in your TV going, oh, okay. Or, or your computer, <laughs> whatever you watch your films on, you're going to go, okay. Oh. You're going to do a lot of that. It's a really good film. I recommend this for anyone who's a fan of the spy films. May not be as entertaining as any of the James Bond movies, but it still is worth your time. And God bless his heart. God bless his soul. Philip Seymour Hoffman. He, he will be remembered as one of the best actors who ever lived. But sadly, I don't think a lot of people took time to figure out and see how talented he was. I really thought he was a supreme talent.